alive You keep hope alive From the beginning to end Your word never fails You keep hope alive Because you are alive Jesus, you are alive Come on, can we sing that just one more time? Say you keep hope alive You keep hope alive From the beginning to end Come on, remind yourself of this truth this morning You keep hope alive Because you are alive Jesus, you are alive Set a hope on you, Jesus. All our hope is in the Lord. Oh. So let him turn it. Watch him work it for your good Cause he's not done with what he's started He's not done until it's good So let him turn it in your favor So watch him work it for your He's not done with what he started Cause he's not done until it's good So hello peace, hello joy, hello love Hello strength, hello hope, it's a new horizon So hello peace, hello joy Hello love, hello strength, hello hope, it's a new horizon. If you're ready for a breakthrough, just open up and just receive. Cause what is more enough is nothing you've ever seen, you've ever seen. So hello, peace, hello, joy, hello, love. So hello, strength, hello, hope, it's a new. You are 
a series called Dreamport. We've been talking about how our city needs to change. There are things that need to change in our city, but our way we see our city will have to have change in our minds long before the way we see our city in real life will change in front of our eyes. In other words, it happens on the inside long before you have hope to experience the thing that you want to have. You have to live from a place of hope. You have to believe that it can happen and trust. And this is not just some false belief. As Christians, we actually have belief that we call faith. And it's in, not just in that something can change, it's in a God who can change things. That's what we have. And so we have this beautiful thing that we can have. But I need you to understand something, and I feel like we probably should have done this way earlier in this series. A city is not a group of buildings. A city is not an infrastructure. A city is not what the terrain. If you are praying for Shreveport to start looking like Denver, Colorado, it ain't gonna happen. If you are praying for humidity to go away in Shreveport, it ain't gonna happen. If you're praying that the bubble continues to work, that might work, all right? Like the Barksdale bubble may continue, all right? Like, but here's the thing you need to understand, that it's not that. So what is a city? A city is a people. And this is the beauty of that. A people can change. People can change. That is hopeful. If you're thinking, man, this thing, I don't know that it can change. Well, if you think of it as a place, as a building, as a climate, as a terrain, you're right. It probably won't change. But if you begin to think of Shreveport as a people, then you recognize people can change. Things can change around us. And to see it change, we need God's dream to come alive in our lives so that people can witness what God is doing and then ask for his dream to come alive in their lives. This is the dream that we need to see happen. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God speaks through the prophet Jeremiah to these, these people, these Israelites that are in Babylonian captivity. They're prisoners of war, and this is what the Lord says to them because it's his dream. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Now, this is really good news, but in the current circumstances that the people would have heard this message, they wouldn't have thought that there was any possible way of there being good news. This was awful timing of good news to be delivered. This was an awful time for them to hear, I've got plans for you. But I'm here to tell you that even when everything looks the worst in your life, that's when God tends to show up saying, I've still got hope for you. I've still got an idea for your future. I've still got some great plans, but here's the problem you and I have. Let's just be honest for a second, okay? We have plans for us too. And when our plan doesn't align with his plan, we have a problem. We have a conflict now. And so the whole point of this message is that God has these plans and the people have these plans. And God is saying, you have to give up your plan to follow my plan. You may think your plan is good, but it leads to disaster. That's why the language says, my plans for you are good and not for disaster. That's a hint. Your plans, you don't even know it yet, they're disastrous. They're disastrous. And so we have to recognize this. God, uh, when, we, when we talked last week about this whole paradigm of Dreamport, we talked about how our calling as followers of Jesus is not to sit and be still, but to go to go into all the world. It's an activity that we are supposed to be doing, but sometimes, sometimes it's hard to know where to get started, right? Anybody ever find that? Like whenever you're getting ready to do something, you're like, I just don't know where to start. Like it's very difficult to get started at something. And this is what I wanna talk to you about today for the next few minutes. And I think this is so important and vital to you seeing dreams that God has in your life to come back to life. But before we dive into what we're about to talk about today, I need you to turn to your neighbor and say, wake up because y'all acting like we dead port, not dream port right now, okay? All right, like I need y'all to wake up a little bit. I know it's rainy outside, y'all like, man, feels so good. No, it don't feel good right now. Like, let's, let's feel uncomfortable for just a little bit, all right? Like, here we go, let's move into this. This is what I wanna talk to you about today. Action is easiest from a place of movement. I want you to get that, okay? This is so important. If you ever played any sport, I, play, I grew up playing football, I was a defensive back, and when I would play defensive back, coaches would teach us, you don't sit on your heels, for those of you that don't know, defensive back is the guy who guards the receivers, okay? Just, okay. Anyway, so like whenever you're playing defensive back, whenever the, the receiver's coming to you, you start engaging movement before they ever get there, and then whenever you need to turn left or right, your hips go, it's a whole lot easier to move from movement than it is from being still. If you just plant yourself and wait, by the time they get to you, 
They've got you beat. You're, they're gone and everything. If you've ever driven, how many of y'all have ever driven a car without power steering? They didn't have, okay. I can't, blew my mind in the first experience. I'm like, how is it that so many people have done this? This is crazy. If you've ever done this, if you've never done this, let me explain it this way. Driving a car without power steering, if you try to turn the wheel without moving, you're going to be in a fight. You're going to be, ah! like, just like, just screaming, and it's barely going to move. You're going to be doing this for a long time, but all it takes is getting a little motion moving in a direction, and suddenly what was a struggle before gets really easy. Action is easiest from a place of movement, not being still. Action is easiest when we get moving in the right direction. It takes place. If you've ever been dancing, Actually, if you're Southern Baptist, you don't even know what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> Let me just say, though, if you've ever been, we had daddy-daughter dance this, uh, this past Friday night, and I took my two oldest uh, kids, my two daughters, to go dancing at this it's a little group that we have of dads and daughters, and, and it was great, man. We had a good time, and my girls love to dance, and so we get out there, and some of y'all, like, you get on a dance floor somewhere, and you're like, you're afraid of what it might look like, so you, you just stay right here, like, like, just like that, and some of y'all get out there, and y'all, all right, like... <laughs> It goes crazy, like, for a second. Y'all need to stop. I'm just saying, all right? Like, here's the thing. We got out on the floor, and we're having a good time, but it blew my mind how many dads did not want to get on the dance floor with their kids. You know why they didn't want to? Because they were scared of what it would look like. This is the problem with a lot of us. We know we need to be moving, but we don't know what it's supposed to look like, and we're scared that if we do something wrong, that it's going to be perceived as incorrect. It's going to be seen as weird. And so rather than do anything, any kind of movement, we just sit still. I'm just not going to do anything. But that's not the, the problem is that God can work with movement. God can work with this movement. Well, we were, uh, we are the proud owners of a minivan. And, uh, and when we were shopping for this minivan, I actually had to leave to go out of town. I went across the country, uh, across the world, actually, to Sri Lanka, which is an island off the coast of India, off the southern coast of India. And while we were there, this van showed up to pick us up from the airport with this missionary that was going to be taking us around the, the island and seeing all kinds of things. And I took a picture of it and sent, my, sent to my wife and said, here's our new van. <laughs> and immediately she said, no. <laughs> now, why did she say no? Because this van did all of the things we needed for a van to do. It had many seats for our kids and their many friends. Not many friends, many friends, all right? Like, it had all the seats we needed. It went, it could go places, all that. Do you know why she said no? Because it's ugly. <laughs> And I agree, like, it was awful. It wasn't the reason that the steering wheel was on the wrong side of the car, which some of y'all noticed that immediately. But like, it's like, it was this, it was just ugly. And it's what it looked like. This is what keeps many of us, get it? Okay, never mind. Many of us from participating in what God wants to do in our lives. It's God's like, just get going. And we're like, it doesn't look good. And he's like, no, get moving in the right direction because for change to come, we need movement. Don't be afraid of what it looks like. Now, I just have a question real quick by a show of hands. This is gonna be confession time for all our Catholic people in the room, okay? Listen, how many of y'all are a bit of a perfectionist? Any perfectionists in the room? Don't raise your neighbor's hand. Raise your hand, okay. Now, how many of us use, even if you're not a perfectionist, if you, I, I'm, I'm sometimes a perfectionist, sometimes not, but sometimes I use being a perfectionist as an excuse not to start something. You ever done that? Like you use it as a reason that you don't want to get something going because you think I, it won't be perfect, so I'm not going to do anything. Y'all, this is the biggest deceit that the enemy could ever do when you need change to happen in your life. Because we think that if I can't do it perfectly, I'm not going to do it. And God's like, who lied to you? Look, do you realize you are human? <laughs> you can't do it perfectly. God just needs movement from you. God just needs activity from you. He is the perfection that partners up with your movement that makes it what it needs to be. You just need to get going. It's our calling to get going. The Israelites have this perfection problem. A lot of times in, in, the, in the Bible, we see the story of them not wanting to get going because they're trying to get it just perfect and they don't quite get it right. In fact, after 400 years of slavery to the Egyptians, Moses shows up. And even if you're not familiar with the Bible, you've heard the story where Moses tells Pharaoh and says, let my people go. 
You've heard that phrase. You've probably even seen the Disney movie, <laughs> Moses. You know what I'm saying? Like, like there's, we, we know this story in our American culture. And, and there's, in this 400 years of slavery, after it all ends, Moses shows up, says, let my people go. Ten plagues come over the Egyptians, culminating with the final plague being that all of the firstborn Egyptians die. Every single one of them, the firstborn males of their, of their entire community pass away, including Pharaoh, the leader of Egypt. His son passes away during this final plague. So Pharaoh, just distraught, comes to Moses and says, yes, get your people out of here, get out. And Moses takes a million people out of Egypt and they go marching out into the wilderness and they're leaving this slavery, this bondage behind. When they get a little ways away though, Pharaoh just starts steaming a bit. And he's like, nope, I can't take this. We're going. So he, he summons the entire army and they go after the Israelites. And the Israelites are stuck between the sea and the entire Egyptian army. And Moses gets up in front of everybody with great confidence and says, guys, don't worry. Watch. God is about to do something amazing. Just sit back and watch what God is going to do. And then do you know what the next verse in the book of Exodus chapter 14 says? This is God speaking to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. <laughs> I love this because the scene is set and Moses wasn't wrong. God was about to do a miracle. But do you know the miracle came in the middle of the movement? The miracle came in the middle of their activity. And God has to be sitting there sometimes looking at us. What are you crying out for? Start doing something. You want your, your, your city to change? Get active. Get to doing something. This is what God is doing. So many times we're waiting on a move of God and God is waiting on a move of man. We're praying, God, do a thing. I don't know if you've ever played cards with somebody that doesn't focus on the game. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like it goes around, you get to somebody, you're like, it's your move. And they finally play, and then it like flies through the next few people, and you get back around, and they're telling a story, and you're like, it's your move again. <laughs> and they, they always say something like this, already? <laughs> That's the way the game is played. <laughs> But they're always waiting. They're always delayed. Some of y'all are looking around right now, and that's really rude of you, okay? Like, look, this is what I feel like God does. We're in this, this game with the Lord, and he's like, it's your move. And we're like, oh, I thought it was your move. And he's like, no, I react to movement. I respond to your movement. That's an act of faith. You know, that's all that is. When we begin to take, <clears throat> excuse me, a step towards the Lord, that's when he shows up because he is impressed with our faith. He is impressed with our faith. It's this miracle that shows up in this moment like this. But if we are, we like to wait for these perfect conditions to take place before we begin to do anything. And if you wait for the conditions to be perfect, you don't see a miracle. In fact, you explain in a way that the conditions were perfect. It was set up. Everything was planned. It all worked out. Does that make sense? So we like to wait for the conditions to be perfect before we, see, we begin to move and then we don't give God the credit because it doesn't look like a miracle anymore. This is why I believe God shows up in the worst possible times because there's no way of denying it was a work of God. There's no way of anybody going, okay, no, nothing else can explain it. But sometimes we're like, we're waiting for things to get perfect before we move and God's saying, quit waiting on perfection, start moving and I'll show you a miracle. Start moving. And this, if you get nothing else today, this is what I want you to get out of today. The miracle of God is found in the movement of man. The miracle of God is found in the middle of the movement of man. When we begin to move, miracles take place. God shows up and, and begins to get started on things. When we start moving towards God's dream, that's when we see the miraculous hand of God at work in our city. That's when we see things going. But many of us like the uh, one day win attitude. Anybody ever had the one day win? Hey, one day when we have more money. Hey, one day when our kids leave. <laughs> hey, one day when we, uh, we don't have anybody telling us what to do. Hey, one day when, and we get in this mode of saying that's when we will move and we plan on activity that never actually comes because something else will happen that will cause us to say one day when. 
Some of you are waiting on having all of the steps planned out. You know God's called you to start a business or to do an expansion or something like that. And all of a sudden you're waiting on all the steps to be planned out before you ever take a step in the right direction. And God's like, no, 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 don't wait because the miracle is found in the movement. Once you know the step and the direction to go, get going and it'll be a lot easier to adjust as you go. The miracles found movement. Some of you are waiting on a bunch of followers to start following you before you start acting like a leader. But the miracles found in the movement, you start acting like a leader and God provides the following as you go. So, oh, some of us are waiting. Some of us wait for us to have extra money to participate in giving to the kingdom of God. But the miracle is found in the movement. When you start giving of what you have, not what you don't have, of what you have, the miracle shows up in that. Some of us are waiting until we have extra time. One day when I retire, that's when I'll begin to serve the world around me. But the miracle is found in the movement. If we will just begin to give of what we have, I wish I could preach it for a minute. Like, Get this picture because it changes everything. Changes everything. Movement matters to God. It matters to God. And when we get going in that direction, he'll correct your direction. It, but it's so much easier to correct something that's moving than it is something that's sitting still. So much easier. The miracle is found in the movement. So here's the question that you have to ask yourself today. And we all have to ask ourselves this question. Here's the question. Are you willing to sacrifice comfort for movement? Because movement sometimes is uncomfortable. I've done several races. I've done several like Tough Mudders and uh, Spartan Runs and stuff like that. And when you do these races, y'all, it's not comfortable. People will ask, like people that don't do these races, nobody at the race asks this question. They all understand each other. But people leading up to the race are like, why would you do that? It's like, because miracle is found in the movement. <laughs> like, my body feels better when I train for something like that than when I don't. There is something that takes place whenever we get going in the right direction. Whenever we get moving in the right direction, are you willing to sacrifice this comfort for movement? Y'all know the way it goes, right? Like, it'll happen to you the day at the Super Bowl. You'll get up, you'll go to the kitchen, you'll ask everybody in your house, can I get you anything while I'm in here? Then you'll go down and you'll be about to sit on your most comfortable chair in your house, and right as soon as your cheeks hit that chair, somebody is going to ask you to go get them something. Come on, y'all know what I'm saying, right? Happens every time. Some of y'all are looking at people again. Y'all are the rudest people in the world. Like, hey, listen, it always happens this way because it's always when we get comfortable that everything begins to be pushing us to the next thing, that something begins to take us. Listen, this is the challenge I think God does. He waits until you get comfortable, you get seated, and God's like, whoa, get back to the kitchen. This is where the miracle takes place. This is where you are blessed. This is where you will grow. This is where you change, not just everybody else being served. You are changed through the service. You are changed through this moment. This is why the miracle is found in the movement because God knows that if we get comfortable, the, we don't see miracles anymore. Mm. When we get comfortable, we quit seeing the miraculous hand of God at work in our lives. Because we have to get out there and start to witness what God is doing. My wife, for Christmas, bought me these uh, slippers. And I open them up on Christmas, and I try them on, and they're too small. So she says, I'll take them back. And a few weeks later, she takes them back to get me the next size up. I think it was the next size up. And I try them on. They're too big. I felt like Goldilocks. Like, <laughs> so she says, I'm going to take those back. When she finally takes them back. I think she got frustrated because I couldn't figure out the size that I needed and anything like this. And so she comes back. She tells me, I traded in your slippers today. I'm like, cool. Where are the new ones? She said, I got Cheez-Its. Now, I want you to get this picture, okay? Slippers, even though they're comfortable, they're made for movement around your house. They're made for walking. If all you were going to do is sit down, you don't need slippers at all. Like, you're just going to do that. Cheez-Its are made for sitting on your rear and doing nothing. That's what Cheez-Its are built for. Now, here's the picture I need you to get. Cheez-Its will run out. Quicker than you think? <laughs> Jesus will run out, but slippers keep you running. 
Oh, y'all need to get this picture, okay? Listen, this is the thing that we need to understand about God. Many of us have traded in a mobile Christianity for a sit on our rear and consume Christianity. We've sat down and we've said, this is what I'm going to get out of this. This is what I'm going to consume instead of putting on something that takes us into activity because this is where we see the miracle. You don't see the miracle. People sit down a lot and say, man, don't you wish it was like that again? And God's like, yeah, I want the future to look better than that. I want it to be better, but it requires movement. Don't sacrifice movement for comfort. It's time to get going. It's time to grow. It's time to go. Every single dream that God gives you, every dream of God, every one of them, for every dream that God gives, he gives grace as you go. Grace as you go. One of the legends of the Christian faith, Tommy Barnett, who started the Dream Center in Los Angeles on Skid Row, where they took everybody that nobody wanted. Legendary dude. This dude used to say it like this. And the first time I heard him say this, I thought, I don't know if I agree with that. I love it whenever somebody challenges your way of thinking sometimes. He said this, he said, God does not give starting grace. He gives grace as you go. And at first I thought, he doesn't give you starting grace. Do you know why he doesn't give you starting grace? That's called faith on mine and your part. When we take a step of faith, then he's like, I was waiting on that. Let's get going. I was waiting for you to take your foot off the brake so that we could roll. I was waiting on you to get some energy going. I was waiting on you to get some momentum because it's so much easier to turn your life around if you're moving than if you're just sitting there. And God says, I'm coming with you. I'm going to join in. And he gives you grace as you go. For every dream that he gives, he's going to give you this kind of grace. It was 40 years after Moses got the people between the, Israelite, the, the Egyptian army and the sea. 40 years later, after wandering around the wilderness for 40 years and an entire generation of people dying, Joshua, Moses' second in command, is faced with a very similar task. He's got to take them across another, another body of water. This one's called the Jordan River. And he's got to take them across this river. Now, the scriptures give us a plain thing. In Joshua chapter 3, we see the, the whole plan mapped out. And in Joshua chapter 3, the scriptures say that this wasn't just a regular river. In fact, this was a river during flooding season. It was overflowing its banks. Now, if I'm God and I'm leading people around and they've been wandering around for 40 years, what's three more months? Just wait. Wait till the river goes down. It's going to be a little easier. But that's not the way God works. In fact, God picks the worst times so that the miracle can be witnessed in those moments. Because if the water's down, they just wade across and it's not a miracle of God, nature gets the credit. But God waits till it's at its max point to where the water's at its deepest and its widest and says, hey, it's time to get moving. And the people are like, oh man. Now, here's this, what the scripture says. God gives very specific instructions to Joshua. Joshua gives them to the people about how they're to follow the Ark of the Covenant. The priests were going to carry this Ark of the Covenant across the river. And as they follow them, then they were going to walk across on dry ground, the scripture says. And this is what the instructions that are given say in Joshua 3.13. The priest will carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, as soon as their feet touch the water. The flow of water will be cut off upstream and the river will stand up like a wall. Now, this is amazing sounding that the river's just gonna stop. The river's just gonna stand up like a wall. But the imagery here does not give us the specific idea that the water is going to stop when one of the priests' feet touch the water. But the imagery here says that the water is going to stop when the collective, all of the priests' feet touch the water that are carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Now, for those of you that don't know the scriptures as well because you're new to this Christian faith thing, the Ark of the Covenant was a box that housed the presence of God in the Old Testament. Do you know who that box is now? Me and you. We are the place where the presence of God resides. We are that now. Scripture calls us the temple of God. That's what we are. We are your bodies are a temple. This is why what you do with your body is so important because you're messing with the temple of God. This is why it matters. 
And this is what's going on. They're carrying the presence of God on their shoulders into the promised land, into the dream that they want to see happen. That's what was on the other side of that river. But it's flooding. It's really deep. It's probably muddy. If you've ever seen a creek that is overflowing, it's not clear anymore. It's got all this stuff stirred up. You can't see your next step. And I believe that it would look something like this because if they carried it on these poles, all the imagery that we see in this would mean that one priest was way over here and the other one was following him, but he was carrying another pole way back here, maybe 10, 12 feet separating the first guy and the last guy, carrying this Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders. So you can imagine when the first dude hits the water and nothing happens. man, these are my good shoes. I'm about to go deeper. And as he goes a little bit further and a little bit further and a little bit further. Now, we don't know that this is what happened. It could have happened on the first guy being there. But I kind of think that it was a test of the faith of those that were going to bring the miracle from the movement. I believe it was a test of faith of even these priests. Are you going to be willing to get in however deep it takes for the miracle to be seen? How much is your faith? Are you willing to wade out into the mess just to see the miracle? Are you willing to wade out a little deeper? Man, I'm screwing up my good tunic. And the dude begins to take a step out and a step deeper and it gets deeper. And who knows, the flooding, you can't see anything. Maybe he took the next step. Y'all ever had that happen? And go, whoop, goes real deep. And you know he's looking over his shoulder like, Bob, go sideways, get in faster. And Bob, sorry, I scared, I scared somebody in the back. I know Bob is a scary name. And, and look, they just slowly moving into the water and there's still no miracle. Come on, ever, ever feel like that? You start moving and you're still waiting on God to do something and you're getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's like, where is God in this moment? Where is God? I've, I've made my act of faith, but God is not showing up in this moment. But when the final guy gets there, All of a sudden, when their feet hit the water, the waters part. Right at the moment where we thought we were going to drown. Right at the moment where you think, all this movement is going to get me killed. But that's when God shows up. Because the miracle is found in the movement as it goes. Now, I want to tell you something, River Park. I believe River Park is called to make a difference in our city. Not just our city, our world, but it starts with our city. Listen. That means you may be the first priest walking out there. You say, Marcus, I'm not a priest. Do you know what first, the book of First Peter says? The letter that Peter wrote to the church says you are a royal priesthood. Not just a priest, you actually have royalty in your blood. You are a royal priesthood, which means you lead the charge. But when we lead the charge into a city that needs to change, you're gonna get a little wet. You're gonna get a little bit dirty. It's gonna be a little, because you're the first guy in. You're the first one moving into faith. And that step of faith puts you in places that maybe you wouldn't have chosen to go on your own. That step of faith puts you in places, it's an act where you're getting in because you know the miracle of God comes in the movement, but we're not waiting on followers to be leaders. We're moving in the right direction. We're moving in the right direction. This is what it takes. This is what it takes to see change take place. To see the dream of God come alive in your own lives, it takes movement because that's where the miracle of God shows up. Would you stand all around the room today? You may be in this room right now and you may not know how to follow Jesus yet. You know you want to follow Jesus. Or maybe you've been quote unquote following Jesus, but you don't know how to do it to the next level. I'm here to tell you, quit worrying about what it looks like and start moving in that direction. Maybe you're in this room and you're like, I've never decided to follow Jesus. Make a move today. The miracle is found in the movement. I promise when you move, he joins you. When you start moving, he comes alongside. Some of you are deciding whether or not you need to take some action steps, whether it's launching a business or expanding some things. Maybe it's something God has put on your heart to do and you don't have all the steps figured out. The miracle is found in the movement. Start moving in the direction God has called you and you'll see it. You'll see him show up. That's when the miracle shows up. This is what you need to recognize in your life, that no matter where you are, I promise you, what God shows up for 
is when we begin to take a step in the right direction. He is impressed by faith. Scripture says it this way, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Impossible. This is why he wants you to take the first step. This is why he wants you to begin to do it. My mom sent me this scripture this week, and I'm gonna read it from the message paraphrase because I think it's so powerful. But if you wanna see our city change, you need to take this to heart right here. Proverbs 11, 11 says it this way in the message paraphrase. When right living people bless the city, it flourishes. Evil talk turns it into a ghost town in no time. Listen, it takes being that first priest to bless the city that is around you. How do we bless? We start moving towards it. We start moving in the right direction. It takes a whole lot of faith to bless. You say, how do I bless something? It's very simple. I bless my kids all the time. I bless them with my time. I bless them with my words. I bless them with the way I talk to them. I bless them with the things that I do with them, the things I do for them. It's the same way you bless a city. You bless it with your words. You bless it with your time. You bless it by getting near the people of this city. Remember, the city is not a group of buildings. It is a people. This is how you bless the world that is around you. And if we want to make a difference, that miracle that you want to see, it's found whenever the people of God start moving towards the problem, not away from the problem. That's when the miracle comes. I'm going to pray for you. But if you're in the room today, and you need Jesus, you, you've got issues of your own, and you're thinking, Marcus, I love that you want to care for our city, but your boy needs care. I need that. You're right, you do. But your miracle is found in the movement too. You need to come and ask for hands to be laid upon you. You need to be asking for prayer. If you're here and you just need a time of soaking in the presence of God, soak in his presence. But don't leave this place without recognizing that God is waiting on your movement. Your movement. Not just our movement. Your movement. No one can do what God has called you to do but you. You. So I'm going to pray for you and I want you to walk out of here as fully commissioned people to move the way that God has called you to move. Father, how good it is to be in your presence. How sweet it is. We feel your anointing on us to do the, the work of ministry, God. We don't do that work alone. But sometimes you call us to get the movement started and you join us in the journey. And so I pray right now, Lord, that we would recognize that the miracle that we want to see is found in the movement that you've called us to take. The movement that you've called us to do and, be, and become for our city to change around us, God. And for the lives of those that are in this place that are hesitant, God, because we don't know how to follow you the right way. We know we want to follow you better. We know we, but we screw it up all the time, God. For those of us that are thinking like that, I pray that we would begin to recognize that we don't need to wait for perfection to follow you. We can follow you imperfectly while you perfect us. We can follow you imperfectly while you change us from the inside out, God, while you make us better and better because that's where the miracle's found when we begin to move towards you, to what you have. Come on, would you just, with your eyes closed, would you just raise your hands as a sign of surrender to him today? It's when we surrender to his plan for our life that things begin to change. It's whenever we give up our ways for his ways that things begin to change. It's whenever we do the things that we don't understand why this works. I don't understand why lifting my hands does a thing. It's movement. It moves us in a direction. It moves us into a posture of surrender so that we can actually surrender to what God is saying. So Father, we, we just pray right now, Lord, that you would just anoint your people. Even when we don't see the, what this effort that we're doing will do for our city or do for our lives or do for our families, God, that we would just become consumed with the idea of moving in the direction you've called us to move. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.